Where are the cheaters? Where are you hiding? Oh, there's one. Got one. You're you're coming with me, bucko. Little lip, little lip, little little lip, little lip, little lip, little lip, lip. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to that one playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2. I am Guile once again, and today I welcome you back to Eastwash, where we will finally be finishing a couple of things up here and getting the heck out of this region. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying we're going to move on to bigger and better things and progress our game along, both in story and location. Got a lot of great detailing work done in the last episode, and now we're going to do the fun numbers game. Yes, the one we've all been waiting for. Doing math. Yes, yeah, so and what we've got to do now is go to each individual quest giver, check out and double check exactly how much experience they're giving, how much gold they're giving, make sure we got some balance going on in this region so that we're actually going to get players from level 3 to level 4, and then our next region, getting them doing some level 4 quests. And along the way, if I find anything that obviously needs some attention on the detailing front of things, we'll take care of that. But for the time being, I think most of Eastwash is done. Haven't delved too far in onto the other side of the river near the end by the, uh, uh, what's this called? Our fort, our Angari fort that's in the ruins over here. Uh, we will have the path over here that's going to progress into another region. Potentially, we haven't decided which region we're going to yet because that's entirely up to you, the viewer. Please go vote below. All right, so first thing we want to do is check our initial quests here, and I'm going to bring out the old handy-dandy trusty calculator. All right, so Captain Sofix is our first quest giver here in Eastwash, and ooh, he actually has room for another quest. We'll keep that in mind just in case we do want to add in some more experience elsewhere. For the time being, though, he doesn't have a ton... He only has four, 400, that's it? All right, well, that's not very much. Let's uh, let's keep tabs on that one. Zoom on, he takes people up to this guy and hit play too, so we're making money. Uh, yeah, Tulanos, uh, to, yeah, Tulanos the Wise, or Tuli as the abbreviation goes for those who know him, only has two quests. All right, well, we can definitely add more here. He's got a total of six hundo. Hundo's not that much anymore. Okay, so get some rest. He wants to go to the inn and then takes the elegant respawn point, which should, in theory, get people to find our friend Ajax here. Okay, so he says, stay clear of the water, back to the tavern. He takes you to the ambush. He takes you to the first spirit of the forest to, to kind of learn about the area. So he sends you just right over there, not that much. And then one-way road, he takes you all the way to uh, this guy interesting because I think I was planning on making this guy a quest giver to send people along elsewhere and I th think I need to add that in still I think that's going to be necessary let's get all of our totals first on experience and then we'll we'll work from there okay so Ajax does have five quests now at some point he sends you over to uh, Charlea more room to grow as well all right overall we're really short on uh, actual experience thus far so this is probably going to need some more Tension. Which means we get to add more quests. Yay! Okay, so she's just getting people to try and leave, which is fine. Okay, then you come along the road and hopefully you find this guy. Now this guy has, uh, Wicca, Wicca Loudfoot has a quite a bit more experience. Uh, only 500. All right, so he has you talk to him and then he says go to Ronin. And only 500. Yeah, we're going to be really short here. Ronin. Now I know Ronin, the plan with Ronin is to make him kind of a central quest giver so he's going to link to a bunch of other quests which i think is important uh this is kind of like a town not a town square but like a, a centralized location on this side of the region so it's going to make sense for there to be a quest giver that kind of redirects you elsewhere so the first one he does is he sends you to the side quest of the people who live over by the edge of the river here where we built the staircase in the last episode that's important i think it's good that he gives a good chunk of experience for each of these uh and then i don't think i set up anything else because right now it just says go to Spooky Tavern, which is way too far. I don't want to send people all the way back to the other side, although they could use the flight path, but uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to have this happen at all. We'll add in, we're going to add in a bunch more quests here, I think. Okay, so right now he's just got 500, and his one quest that he does have is going to send people over. Lady Sala has three quests. Yeah, defeating the crocodile, which definitely should be worth a lot. Uh, there's no, not a significant amount of combat involved in this half of Eastwash just yet, but players could also potentially grind a little bit on the spiders. I do want to add a little more depth to this story though involving these characters. Some of it will continue elsewhere, but definitely got some ideas. 
For the time being, Lady Sala, three quests, 2,400 experience. All right, and then up the road past the little, you know, spider ranch, I guess we can call it, uh, toward the Angari Trials, we have a chain of quest givers. And yeah, these guys have a lot more stuff going on. Go back to Ronin, then you take out some of the spiders there. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the skeleton guy over here. This guy needs a different name. We can call him Orag still, but we will make sure that he gets uh, an Angari name. Orag Angari because he's one of the ancient Angari spirits that still guards this area. Talk to him, learn a little bit more about the forest. And then we have the Trials of Angalore, so he's going to have you go and defeat a wolf so that you can become one in understanding the wolf spirits of the forest. And then Destiny, he's going to send you off to the next person in the trial. Okay. Rorindir has five quests, total of 4,550, which is a good solid chunk. He then sends you over to our friend down here. This is, uh, oh man, Lililip, 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 over here. Uh, she has three quests, so again, taking you to a spirit of the forest, to the one that's over by... Yeah, the uh, respawn point that we kind of hid last time. And then you have to go and defeat the bandits, or at least the leader of the bandits. Then you may pass. So 2400 experience, that's pretty solid. Plus the experience for doing the combat by the bandits, which should give a little bit more too. I'm not going to factor the combat experience into this as much. I think it's more important to just have the quest line experience. And then we can always leave a little bit of a buffer knowing that if there's going to be some combat required, then more often than not, players will either exceed the required experience for the next level for this region and or they're going to be really dang close but they, they should be able to get it we can always make it so that the combat makes them go over so they might level up in the region before finishing all the quests but that's okay if they ended up doing a lot of grinding so three quests from her 2400 experience and then number three this is a cool again he's going to send you over to one of the spirits he's going to have you do one combat going to be the guy right over here this wolfie right there and then he'll have you pass as well this is even more experience change this quest title and we're just going to mysteriously call this our blood is their blood so he has a total of 3800 experience over three quests and then we got adith adith again three quests 3500 experience i'm going to bring this one make it the normal amount so it's 1600 that'll bump them up a bit three quests 4650 on the experience and then skog just has you do a little discussion with him in place and then he sends you along your way, and he's just going to send you to the inn that's actually in the camp. And then we have one quest giver inside of the barracks area here. Uh, right now, just, uh, just 2,100. We can add some more stuff in here, too, if we need to, just to help establish people. And this probably be the one that sends people to the edge of the map that's going to process them into the next region. All right, so as it currently stands, we have 24,840 experience for the entire region of Eastwash which means we are only short 8,160, which is actually not too bad. First question is gonna be, what quest can we maybe bump the experience up on just a smidge? And then exactly where do we feel like we wanna add more storyline to? So I think first things first, coming back to Captain Sofix here, what I would like to do is bump up some of the experience on what he has. So right now everything is about uh, 100 experience. I'm gonna bump these all up to 200. So I'm gonna double what he's giving out. Okay, so we've already added 400 additional experience. Now, Thule over here actually doesn't have a lot that he does at the moment. I like his experience levels and what he's given right now. Uh, 500 experience to kick off another quest. Probably a little high, but I'm okay with it because it kind of sets things up for the rest of the entire region. I would probably like him to do a little bit of work kind of helping establish the area once again. I think it's good little game loop habit to get into. So we're going to move one in front of Tread Lightly. And we're just going to have players go over to the shop here. We're going to say really light amount of experience, so this won't change anything too badly. 100 experience, but we're not going to apply any gold for it. So that adds a little bit to what he's got. It would be nice if he kind of also established a quest chain that allowed you to head toward the other side of Eastwash, or at least toward the middle. So I'm actually going to have him end on a quest that potentially sends you over to Wicca Loudfoot. He is the guy that's at the little hut. Hunter's cabin right here, so we'll send people there. We'll kind of say that Thule has like a bulletin board at his inn that kind of has things that people need, like you'd find in other 
you know, RPGs and games like that where you find quests maybe. So he's gonna say he's got a letter from the locals, they need some help. We'll now say that uh, Thule here has 1200 experience he's gonna give out. We've actually doubled what he had, he was 600 before, now he has an additional 600. And actually, you know what, I am gonna add one more. Let's, let's finish him up. Uh, we're gonna have him uh, let's see, let's put one up here a little bit. Let's say find some wares, it's gonna take pe tell people to go over there. Uh, and then instead of Massacre the Bandits, we're gonna send people over to like the first spider area, just so there is some combat going on, kind of early on. Let's click on this spider area, just cause it's close to town, makes sense. Uh, five monsters, probably pretty good. And we'll let them get the full big chunk of experience. Uh, no, let's take it down to a thousand. I think a thousand, not 1600, thousand's pretty good. And he's gonna pay people fairly well, let's say 25 gold at this point. All right, and then that brings his total, yeah, 2200, so not 1200, but 2200. All right, that's good. That actually brings the required amount down to 6,160, so we are almost there. Now, Ajax uses all of his 2650, I think is good. I'm not gonna fiddle with that because we've got other places that we can add on to. As far as our girl here, I'm going to think about her, because I feel like I could add something there, but for the time being, her little side thing there is more explanative. Now, what I was thinking about with Wicca here, so he's going to tell you about the Loudfoots, and then he wants to send you over to his father, Ronan. So we need to add something else here. I'm going to put it in order before, and I'm going to say that he's going to have you probably fight some spiders too. However, I think, I, and I know I kind of said I wasn't going to do this earlier, but I think it makes sense to... Have somebody take you over to take on the elite spider. Oh, there he is. He was hiding in the rock. We're not going to say intimidate Balaki. Actually, you know what? I have a completely better idea. We're not going to have them go into combat with the spider. I have, I have a new plan. I know exactly what I'm going to do. We need to create kind of a point that players can go to that's hidden. And I'm thinking something, something, well, not hidden, but I need something that I can target the quest to. I can't target the quest onto scenery. I can target it onto fighting things in combat or other people or specific buildings. So what I wanna see, this will get rid of a lot of our scenery and that's a bit large. Everything's gonna to be too big. I can't really hide a lot of these things in the, well, that might actually fit in that rock if I have one squares worth. I precise move and then I increase the size of this rock slightly. Disturb the plants too much. Use the arid building type, get it down to one square here, move it. Yeah, I can hide it right in the rock here. Won't even know it's there. That way this quest has a location that we can send people to, but it doesn't have to be combat oriented. Boom, go to modular building. And I'm gonna say extract some spider eggs. We'll make this a lot of experience because it seems like it'd be a dangerous job. The reason he wants you to get spider eggs is because Wicca's family obviously are like spider ranchers. That's, that's their industry. They've got spiders on their farm. So he wants you to go steal some eggs so that they can very easily hatch them and have more uh, livestock. Nice, that's a, that's a pretty good addition actually. So 1650 on the experience I think that added. He's now at 2150. Now we only need 4,510. Okay, so people would then go over to the main Loudfoot estate. Ronan Loudfoot will send people over here to do a little side quest. And I wanna elaborate on this one a little bit. Okay, so this was the lady who said that her son disappeared. So what I wanna do is we'll have an uh, exposition, an exposition segment here where you're just gonna talk to her. We'll call this Missing Sons and you're just gonna talk to her. No gold, and we'll say we'll say 250 on the. Okay, then she asks you to go and talk to the Angari Ranger over here, the guard, to see if they saw anything. And they then tell the player, "Oh, it. Uh, there's a lot of dangerous things around here. There's spiders, but there's also crocodiles. The family who lives by the river there, they have a dock down at the bottom of their staircase on the edge of the cliff. Potentially, their kid went down there and you know ran into the crocodile, and that could be the issue. So that's what the Angari are going to tell them." Then she says, well, can you go, can you go handle that for me? Because that's dangerous and we can't, we can't go to our own docks and fish and do all the things that they would normally do if there's dangerous crocodiles down there. So you go deal with that, come back and let's see. Oh, then she wants you to go back to Ronan Loudfoot. Okay, so she returns you back the quest chain at the end of that. Perfect. I'm going to add another exposition, say another 500 experience. So she's adding on quite a bit. All right, and this one's not search for more beer. All right, so she's gonna give another exposition. This is Howls in the Night, Hear Wolf Calls. 
going to tell you about the wolf calls. They hear scratching outside. They hear things moving about. They're afraid that maybe it wasn't the crocodile. Maybe it was something else, and they're not sure. There's also, like, old stories in the area, the myth of the woods. So she's going to take you back to Ronan Loudfoot, and she's going to make Ronan think that, you know, maybe these old stories from ancient times are not just stories after all. Ronan's had some experience in running with the Angari in the past. This is a man that's like in his 70s, close to 80. Historically, the Angari are not really been trustworthy. There's legends that say the Angari have sold their souls. They might actually be more than just one with the spirits and the wolves of the woods. Some believe that uh, the Angari might actually be able to transform. All right, so he's sending you there. You're gonna learn about some of the mysterious things Maybe the Angari won't tell you. And, ooh, this is actually good. I like this. So in frustration, I think he should have some kind of retaliation, something that's going to hurt the Angari in a way. I'm not sure what, because I don't want you to just go fight wolves. That doesn't really make much sense. I did have the Angari take kind of like the tax of the, the spider meat from the ranch here as one of the quests over here. So maybe, maybe I make Ronin actually go and have you like steal from them i need him to send people over here although i would prefer it just be the building i can't really hide another building in there so i'm just going to pretend and we'll add a quest that goes over to one of the guards over here and then if people haven't attached and linked over to that quest giver that might get them attached to that point too i'm just going to call this see for yourself we'll take the experience down to 500 gold zero because we're starting to stack up the experience pretty well here now. Uh, he's going to send you over to the guard. He's going to say, see for yourself. And he wants you to basically like spy on them. Uh, I guess in theory, what I'd really like the quest to do is go to the actual tower. And you would like snoop around. Kind of do a little sneaky type quest. And in doing so, you might find some documentation that shows that maybe the Angari are either stealing his livestock. And he's aware of it. And kind of wants to, to combat that. Or see if you can find something else that might get you to think the way he thinks. Because he's a he's a kind of an angry person. He's 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 been burned several times in the past by them and just doesn't trust them at all and probably never will the rest of his life. Uh, and then I think uh, he should probably we'll we'll put this ahead of that one, this new quest. And he'll uh, I think it's only right that he sends people just over to the end, like, okay, hey, thanks for coming and helping us out. Because, you know, the first thing you do is you go and help some of the residents. So you say, why don't you stay here with us at the ranch and get a room at the inn. Of course, not really an inn. We'll pretend this is part of their actual estate, not really an inn. Uh, and this should be pretty low, we'll say 250. And then what I think he's gonna do is he's gonna send you over to, this is a tavern, but I want it to be like help with, uh, help with the ranch. So this is gonna be like, we're just gonna call this uh, meat processing. So he's going to say, hey, if you need some work, I've got some work that you can do. We'll add 500 experience and he'll pay the player pretty well. So put that ahead of C for yourself as well, because it potentially links to the other quests up there. If players get close enough to a quest giver, they should recognize it and see it. And that'll put them right next to it. And then I think it's probably, yeah, let's have them, uh, him also send people over to the shop stall that's over here so we got a we got like three shops in Eastwash, so people should be pretty financially well off at this point if they're doing a, a little bit of grinding and getting loot from fighting spiders and whatnot i want to make sure that you know players still go and get rid of some of their loot we'll just call this take a load off just as a placeholder i want him to have five quests i will probably have him link to some other stuff in the future the reason I don't want to quite do anything too extravagant with him yet is because this path will probably lead into another region. We've got this one over here, we've got this one up here, and this one down here that are in the current vote on the poll. If you haven't entered the straw poll and uh, put your vote down for either region one, two, or three, please do so and you can be part of the decision on where we go next. All right, I need to go back and do some math because I actually don't know how much experience we got from our lady over here. That's an additional 750. Okay, we're gonna say Myth of the Woods when she sends you back to Ronin. This should be a good experience dump. Not 10,000, that's wrong. 1,000 on that one. That takes her to 3,900. All right, so with that, we only need about 3,000 more experience, which should be pretty dang easy to do, actually. Yeah, I think uh, for those who want combat, we're gonna add another quest giver. We'll just say, say a town guard model. Uh, we'll put him kind of out here. This will be one of the ranch hands. A good way to kind of add fun little quests 
uh, I think, in a game is to add something that kind of makes the player feel like they are a part of that region. They're important. They're playing a role in helping the populace. So he's going to say, uh, I need you to go over this building. Uh, you're going to grab some tools and I'll get you some stuff that's, or go grab some stuff that's going to help you with the uh, spider ranching. Whatever tools are needed for spider ranching, that's what he's having you go get. Say 250 experience, no gold quite yet. All this extra hands. And then this one, second quest, uh, let's see. Why don't you go over to the main building, call this. All this payment processing, gotta put all your tax information, documentation in so that they can pay you properly. Say another 250, no gold quite yet. And then number three, he's gonna send you over and you're just gonna take out one spider. Just be a nice, easy 250 experience no gold you're gonna kind of like you know gain some experience like how to how to properly fight a spider he's gonna give you some tips and some pointers now go give it a try Then you're gonna come back and be like ah that wasn't so bad and he'll be like okay well since you're you feel like you know what you're doing now why don't you go back in there and I want you to go kill 10 spiders if the player only 300 experience because they're gonna gain a lot from just trying to go in and actually just fight some spiders. But this is where he's gonna give you your payment. You're gonna go in, you're gonna kill some spiders, bring back a bunch of the meat, he's going to pay you for that. And then the last one, he's gonna send you back over to deliver the meat to this hut over here. And that kind of ties in with what Ronin had people do to go processing plant. You can also be a part of the process of actually harvesting it. All this meat delivery, say 100 experience and he'll give you another 10 gold if you do that task as well so decent amount of gold value here and experience and uh, i love the name unhappy Dapman or Daphman. that just sounds great like he he kind of hates his job he's a grumpy dude he has five quests all right so the only missing experience now is 1860 left to go for the entire region this is going to be pretty easy to fix from this point on we're going to go to our first angari ranger here in the trials uh, he's got he's got a pretty substantial chunk. I'm gonna up his last one here. 500 brings him to an even 48. Uh, this first one to go to this first uh, spirit of the forcest. I'm gonna bump that up another two. Well, his last one that sends you on. I'm gonna bump that up to 500. So he actually adds a total of 500. Cool is already 500 for his quest that takes you to a spirit. Full there, full there. Here's what we'll do to balance this out. I'm gonna take this down. We're gonna lose some here. We're gonna lose 650. I'm gonna make this a thousand. Just because it's it's kind of already been processed into our total. We're gonna lose 650 there, but I'm gonna gain it back for completing this uh, quest to fight this elite wolf over here. So if we take this to 2300, that should even us out. And he still gives 3800 like he did before. That way we don't lose too much in the long run here. Edith. This one is a good experience bump. Good there. Good. Uh, oh, see, you may pass the 60. Gosh. Okay, we'll just say every time they go into the next one and pass on, we'll just make it worth more and more, which means we can do a bigger dump on this last one. Uh, this is not locate my shoes. This is, let's call this enter the camp for now, and we'll make this a solid 2,000. Kind of completes the trial quest line. All right, so he's at 2,500 on Skog. That adds 350. We only need another 760 experience for the entire region. So what we will do is we will add some more stuff in over here. We're gonna have this person tell you to go over, we're gonna have you talk, quote unquote, talk to the guards over here, the spiders, uh, but we're gonna have you uh, help gather help gather food. A little bit of gold value on this one too. Okay, so there's plus 250. We need 510. We'll add one more here and I think it's pretty important to send people over to, uh, shoot, do we not have a potion shop anywhere in this? That's kind of a problem. I kind of like the little Sylvan potion shop, but I feel like it's a little too perky for the area. Let's do this. I've got an idea. We'll go civilized potion shop. Get it out of the way so we don't destroy a tree. I'm going to move it down by the road here. The due to our, it makes this a little bit of a hike. That's okay. I'm gonna make potions maybe a little more expensive here too. Let's say potions are 15 gold, not sinking it. In the starting area, I'm gonna make them five gold. 
seems reasonable. People are people are having pretty substantial amount of income from selling things. Let's just click on a random player. Yeah, 393 gold. They've got plenty of cash. So these are going to be, in theory, I guess, higher level potion. Makes sense. Should be more expensive if they're like higher level potions for higher level players. All right, so now we at least have a potion shop. Let's actually make another one. Well, not a lot of combat that people will be sent to from here. So I feel like this isn't really that kind of centralized location, say. I got Steve the intern telling me we have to cut to a commercial break now. Are you a traveling adventurer? Are you constantly weighted down by excess loot? Do you need to take a load off? Carrying around too many spider eggs? Have excess cobalt teeth? Need to get rid of some of those banded eyeballs? Crocodile skins? You can sell it all at Frank Bean's Traveling Merchant. Frank Bean's Traveling Merchant will give you money for all that crap you're carrying. We'll beat anyone's advertised price or your potions are free. Frank Beans LLC does not give away any merchandise for free. Frank Beans LLC is not responsible for the handing out of any fraudulent currencies. No refunds, all sales are final. Frank Beans LLC is not affiliated with Tori's Taverns Franchise Incorporated. I'm not sure what just happened. Anyways, we should actually put in a flight path. And this should probably... Yeah, let's bring the flight path over here. Ah, crap, I just got rid of my tree. I think that works. That's pretty good for the plants still. All right, so we need to make a path here. Oh yeah, that works good. That kind of gets through the trees. There. We'll set the price on this. Uh, let's say, yeah, let's leave that at 50 gold. Um, I don't want people to necessarily fly to the Angari camp because it kind of cuts past the quest line that takes you through the trials. Let's just set it as solid 50. If people really want to fly over there, they can. Quest lines we have set up are kind of flavor anyways to go that direction perfect world we would make it so that like the game made it so you couldn't fly to that area until you've unlocked it sort of thing but it is what it is i just want to make sure people can get to and from there pretty easily i don't want them to necessarily be able to go from here straight to here so they can go to the ranch at the other end of the region but ideally they start over here they quest all along this half of the river come to the ranch they eventually come over here do the trials and make their way back over to this spot so they're on this half of the region again, but on the other side of the river. And then eventually we'll have a path going this way that will cut into this territory as well. We'll have paths that cut this way into this one and this way into this one. All right, so back to Lady Shiangari. This is not find your shoes. You're going to go to the spider and it's going to say, help prepare the feast because you got to go over there and uh, deal with spiders. The entirety of Eastwash seems to be built around the economy of killing spiders for food consumption. Well, that's right. I wanted to make a potion shop over here. I'll have to find a good spot for it, but for the time being, we'll put it in uh, in the river. All right, so we got a potion shop here now. Plenish supplies. We'll say 250 experience, no gold. That actually brings our total experience up to only needing 260 more to guarantee that players in this region will go from level 3 to level 4. Granted, considering there is combat, there's quite a bit of combat now between the spider region over there, the one over here, taking on bandits. There's a few of the things where they have to fight crocodile, they have to fight an elite wolf, they have to fight an elite uh, skeleton. So there's enough combat experience. They should guarantee level 4 if they do everything in the region. So I am not worried about the experience numbers anymore. And if you add anything else uh, quest-wise to this region, it'll just be a bonus. I am going to add a few more NPCs in here. I'd like to see a couple more guards. Add some Angari Rangers kind of scattered about. Seems to make sense to me. This is like the densest locations. Seems to make sense that there should be more of them. So last time I gave you guys all a vote on whether you wanted Region 1 up here to the west of Eastwash, the north of Eastwash, number 2, and number 3 down here to the southeast of Eastwash. And I'm going to let that vote keep going because I feel like more of you could participate. Region 1, Region 2, Region 3, just so everyone remembers. However, what I am going to do is I'm going to spend the money right now and we're going to unlock all three of them. Then as far as levels go, for the time being, I'm going to label them all as level 4. That is because each one of these regions will potentially be an option that players can exit out of from Eastwash if they so choose. The region down here, this one's a little small, it's probably going to stay just a level 4. Uh, this region I have some ideas for, might be a 4-5, haven't decided. This one's pretty big, so it probably will be a 4-5. I don't want that to sway anyone's decisions. 
But what I do want us to look at real quick is what I sort of have planned. And this will kind of give you an idea of maybe what you would like to see. You can kind of vote depending on what my plans are for each of the regions. So really quickly, if you haven't voted yet, please go down to the link down below in the comments. We have the first region is going to be a kind of an open field slash a little bit of pine forest trickled in. The region up here to the north is going to be a desert region. And then down here along the coast again, if we go this direction, going to be a little bit of a normal forest like you would find in Brightwood, uh, as well as some open fields. And we will put something uh, kind of close to the water. Kind of looking around though, uh, we did complete the little global quest to get 100 players to level two. We actually have 382 level two players, which is pretty cool. It means we should be starting to get some of those guys if they're pretty hardcore players closer and closer to level three. Yeah, so the big key now is just gonna be uh, waiting for players to actively progress their way through and reach level three so we can start getting our first players into Eastwash. Probably not a bad idea to actually start uh, making time go faster. And we'll see how quickly people start to level up. I wish I could see and click on like and know exactly what level everybody is. That'd be actually what we could do for fun actually. Detect cheaters. Yes, that would be a fun thing. Oh, we got one. We got one. Speed hack detected. Speed hack. Sir, an achiever. They're very knowledgeable. They want us to buff the wizard. I'm not gonna buff somebody when you're cheating. Where did this guy go? Where are you at? Oh, there you are. Ah, uh, you died. All right, issue warning. Oh, I have to hold it down. That's... Aha! Issued warning. In for cheaters. Where are the cheaters? Where are you hiding? Oh, there's one. Got one. You're you're coming with me, bucko. Cannon, you little cheating son of a biscuit. I'm having way too, way too much fun trying to search for cheaters. Aha! Speed hack. Why do you guys need speed hacks? I already increased the movement speed of all the characters in the game. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Who are you? Item duper. We got duplicator. Get banned. Or warned, I should say. Get warned. Town here. Dense, dense population. Oh, we got one. What is this? Another speed hack. What the heck is a speed hack and why do you guys feel like you need to do it so often? Oh, oh, we got a couple. We got a bunch of them. Speed hacks, what are you? Gold farmer, that is really unacceptable. Oh, oh he disappeared into a rock. Somebody should really put a fence inside that rock. And prepare to be warned. Ha, nailed it. Item duper. We got an item duper. Come here, item duper. I'm gonna dupe you into the warning box. Speed hack. We got another speed hacker. Oh, hey, I didn't want to move him. Sorry, dude. Didn't mean to do that. Want to issue a warning. There you go. You've been warned. All right, that's enough being mean to people. All right, so pretty solid progress made. We've got all our quests fleshed out for the most part in Eastwash. The experience balance seems to be there. We got some, uh, should be pretty fairly fluid for players to come in when they hit level three, progress through everything here, hit level four, and then they will go into the next section which will be one of these three regions, and we will reveal that at the very beginning of the next episode. So again, if you want to go down to the comments, please check out that link to the straw poll, and we're going to have either Region 1, Region 2, or Region 3 uh, that we will move into for the next episode. All three are unlocked, so we will make it to them at some point, but you can now see open fields in one, desert in number two, and kind of foresty coastal region again in number three, so until then, I'm Kyle, this has been That One Playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.